Good night, everyone. Dolphin Oracle back again tonight. And um, you know, after creating the basic install of the MX-19 video the other night, I thought it might be a good idea to go ahead and do an encrypted install. Uh, because on MX-19, there's a couple of different partitions that are required. And sometimes there's some confusion about them. So I'm going to crack open Gparted here and redo my partitions. Now, this is a great opportunity to show something. Sharp-eyed viewers who watched the last video will notice that SDA uh, was my SSD drive, my smaller SSD drive, and SDB was my big partition. When I booted the live USB tonight, it flipped them. So SDA is my internal, is my large uh, spinning media terabyte hard drive, and the SSD is now SDB. Uh, why did it do that, you ask? Well, it turns out that in the Linux world, these device labels are not guaranteed to be the same every time. The dev labels. And it matters It matters what kernel you're running. They can flip. It can be which port you plugged your live USB into this day. It can be a variety of different reasons why they might flip. It doesn't particularly matter that they flip because modern uh, mounting of drives is all done by something called the UUID. The, uh, I believe that's Universal Uniform Identifier. Um, if you look in the FS tab, uh, you probably see something that looks like UUID equals in some big long, like, you know, this big uh, string of, of numerical characters. That's the UUID. And because these slash dev device devices are assigned every time the machine boots up, that's why we've switched to these UUIDs for everything. So anyway, it's not a big deal, but if you went from one video to this one and you think I've switched drives, I haven't. It's the letters that have changed. But at any rate, SBDB2 was the 70 gigabyte partition that we made uh, to host my MX install. But what I need right now, if I'm doing a boot, if I need, if I'm doing an encrypted install, the MX installer actually requires a small unencrypted boot partition. Now this is not the ESP partition. It's not this guy. I know some Linux distributions out there will let you use use the ESP as the boot partition. Um, we're not going to do that. Um, uh, we're we're going to have a separate slash boot. All it's going to contain is some kernel files and initial RAM drive files so that the that will load the rest of the system and that the root file system, the home folder, the swap, all that will be encrypted. But the, the, that one little boot drive won't be. So we got to create that because you can't, you won't encrypt, you won't be able to encrypt the drive until you're able to select that drive. And slash boot is not the same as ESP. ESP is where the little grub bootloader goes for UEFI boots. It's those are very small files. It can be a very small partition. You can see mine's only 512 megabytes, and honestly, it's too big. Um, I'm going to make a one gigabyte uh, boot partition. Which, if you look on your, if you're running Linux right now, and you look in your uh, slash boot folder on your computer, you on your in your file system, you'll see the Grub installation, and that's what it's the bootloader, and that's what's going in um, uh, into slash boot. It's just the uh, you can just separate the file system this way. Think of it as slash home, but like slash home can be on a different partition. Slash boot can be on a different partition too. Okay, so we're going to make that. So I'm going to delete the existing 70 gigabyte partition, and I'm going to create a new one, and I'm going to make it one gigabyte. Like I said, you could probably get by with smaller, but uh, whoops, I did that wrong. Do it again. Um, you can probably get by with smaller, but I like to I do a lot of kernel testing, so I, I don't want to have to futz around too much with with um, with. Uh, I don't want to futz around too much with kernel, uh, with, with with having to manage the size of the boot drive. I just want to be able to install some kernels and not have to worry too much about it. Uh, each kernel, I don't know, it's going to be around 100 megabytes or so. So I can install quite a few kernels before I have to get nervous. All right, and then the rest of it is going to be the MX partition. There we go. Um, now. One thing about the boot partition, you should probably format that ext4. We recommend that if you run the auto installer and if you do the auto install and you encrypt on an auto install on MX in the MX installer, it'll actually create a small boot partition that's ext4. Okay, so that's it. I'm going to apply those changes. <sighs> there we go. That should be relatively quick. Yeah, and now we're going to crack open the installer. 
and I'll show you setting that up. The installation process is very similar to um, to the normal install. You just have to click an extra box. Uh, so I'm going to do a custom install because again, I, I don't I have inst I have partitions I don't wipe that want wiped out. So auto install is not an option for me. If when I'm on my little laptop, my little laptop that I keep in my backpack for for trips and and carrying around it's a little netbook. I wipe that drive every time so I can use the auto install on that one. I'm not going to do that on my main production system because I just got too much going on. So custom installs for me. Root target root partition that's going to be again not SDA because my drives become SDB. And see this is where I should have labeled the thing, but I didn't. Um, but this is this is the one, the 69 gigabyte one. Uh, root, I'm gonna keep my home partition inside the encrypted root. Oh, I gotta click the encrypted root checkbox. That's important. And I'm gonna label that MX19. And then for swap, I'm gonna use the encrypted swap that I had before, which is that one right there. And then the boot partition, I'm going to use the small boot partition that we created. There it is, SDB2, 1 gigabyte EXT4, and I did label that one boot partition, so that's there. And then I'll give it a password. I'm going to use an amazingly complicated password for purposes of this video. You can use whatever password you want. If you want to use... Um, there are advanced options you can select. If you are into it, you can change different settings on the encryption algorithm. I don't actually know. I am not an encryption expert. I do not know what these, what's good and what's bad in these, in these uh, options. Uh, I have been told that the defaults are reasonable, so I'm going to run with that. So now I get the confirmation, SDB3 for the slash root partition, yes. SDB7 for my swap partition, yes, that's correct. And SBD2 for the boot partition, that is correct. Can't be undone, no problem, that's what I want to do. Now it's going to install, and it's going to give me a selection of things here to install Grub. Now I booted UEFI, as usual, and so it's defaulting to ESP, but I want my MX ESP to fall on the uh, SDB1 version of my uh, ESP file. It, for those that may have followed along in one of my previous videos, I have Windows on the sp spinning ter terabyte hard drive with its own ESP partition and I keep it separate from my Linux stuff. And the Linux stuff's on here. So I'm going to put it on that drive. Just make sure you when you're, when you're doing these installs, you do need to know where things are in your computer. So I'm going to collect that. Oh, interesting note, if I did happen to install that into the wrong ESP, it literally won't matter. The system reads the ES both ESPs every time it boots up. Now I'm just going to set up my computer names. Here, again, anything you want to have. And my my home network is called home. Da -da -da -da. Times, time zones, American English, view settings. I'm good there. One of the benefits of being in the same time zone is that I don't have to set the time zone. And I give it my system and root passwords. And then down here, I'm actually going to check auto login on this because I'm already encrypting the drive. I don't want to have to enter two different passwords or enter the same password twice, depending on how you're encrypting it. I'm going to hit auto login. Now, I'm going to, since I'm already doing the encrypted password, it doesn't matter that I auto login. And that's it. Now, while the copy's going, I thought I'd mention a couple other things about the way the encrypted drives are set up. If you did do a separating, when you when you boot up after an encrypted install, it's going to ask for a uh, password. On our default uh, boot splash setup, you're going to get a little a little um, text box with a little lock on the side, and it's, it, that's going to be your the space you enter your password. After you enter that password. Then what's going to happen is the root, the 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 the, the, it's, the 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 main file system is going to start the load, and there's actually a key file that the installer generates that is stored inside the encrypted partition, and that key file will be used to unlock your home partition and your swap partition. Um, they're encrypted with the same password as the home and as, as the root drive is, and you, you could access them manually if, you, manually if you needed to. But for convenience sake, we've also set up a randomly generated key file that can be used, that will be used, and it's stored inside the encrypted partition, so no one can just grab it and boot up and get into your home files. 
this copy process is kind of long and boring. I'm going to let it go, especially while I'm recording. So I'm going to save some ban I.O. bandwidth and stop the recording for now. I'll be right back. And there we go. Installation is complete. Now on my next reboot, I'll be prompted for the encrypted password after selecting uh, from the boot menu the boot option that I want. And um, should load up just fine from there. So that's installing, setting up your partitions and installing onto an, uh, an encrypted MX installation. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or annexlinux.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.